Hi everyone, my name is Alex Koo, and I'd like to welcome you to Modern Symbolic Logic, a course offered by the Philosophy Department at the University of Toronto. In this very quick video, I'm just going to go over some of the sort of key aspects of the course, uh, but I want to stress that everything you need to know about the class is in the syllabus. The syllabus is really long, so you will have to sort of go through it, but uh, there's going to be lots of aspects of the course that are really important to you that I'm not going to talk about in this video, so you really want to go there first and often to answer your questions that you might have about anything related to the course structure, administrative issues, or policies. This is a fully online course, and in this class I'll be delivering lectures and course material via videos on Quirkus, and these videos will be accessible using YouTube or My Media. Now, My Media, if you haven't heard of it, is just U of T's video hosting uh, software, so it's really only there if you can't use or don't like to use YouTube. Most students prefer YouTube because they're used to it and it's got a lot of great features, so I'm just posting both links in case so you have a bit of choice. Uh, but everything you need is going to be on Quirkus, so you want to go there regularly, including updates, uh, submissions of tests, and so on, the optional readings, and all the video links. The testing and the evaluations in the course are as follows. There's going to be four term tests, uh, as well as a final exam in the exam period, uh, and a weekly quiz uh, starting pretty much immediately, uh, but you'll be able to see the deadlines and the due dates for all these things on Quirkus. The term tests themselves are in the two hour time slot that is assigned for the course, but they're not actually gonna take up the full two hours. Uh, we just have a two hour time slot to sort of allow for people uh, who might be experiencing some technical difficulties or so on so that they can get the test done in the time. And tests will be done through Quirkus. Uh, you will be able to sort of uh, answer your questions right on Quirkus, but a lot of this work is best done by hand. So it's really handy to be able to have the ability to scan and quickly upload a picture that you've taken of uh, something you've written by hand into the Quirkus test. Now, uh, a lot of you might be worried about trying to make this happen and uh, in sort of tight testing situations. So uh, starting immediately, there will be a practice test available that is worth nothing on Quirkus, just designed so that you can actually uh, experience what the actual submission will be like and you can get some practice in. The quizzes will be on Logic 2010. That's this program that you have to download externally and install onto your computer. As far as I know, it works with almost everything, but I don't think it plays too well with things like iPads and so on. Now, there's one exception to this. The very first quiz of the course is actually going to be administered through Quirkus. Logic 2010 is a little finicky to use. Uh, it's not really the greatest program from a user's perspective, but it does a really good job of teaching you logic. And uh, I have lots of demonstration videos detailing how to use the many features of Logic 2010. What's important to know about all the quizzes, especially the Logic 2010 quizzes, is that the program tells you whether or not you've answered a question correctly. So you don't actually have to submit your quiz until you have answered all the questions correctly 100%. So that means that you have unlimited attempts, it tells you if you're wrong, and I fully expect every student in this course to get 100% on all their quizzes. This is really just designed to make sure that you keep on top of the work and that uh, you sort of build confidence so that you can do this in a testing situation. Two important things to know about Logic 2010. The first is you have to register, and when you register, please use your student number, not your UTOR ID. So use your student number and uh, make sure you pick the correct campus. So if you're St. George, it's just U of T, and if you're UTM, pick UTM as your campus. The last thing is Logic 2010 doesn't automatically submit the questions that you've solved for the quiz. After you solve a question, you always want to save it, and then you want to hit the Submit button on the bottom, and then you'll be able to submit and upload your answers to the system so that I can see that you've done the work. You can always check the results of your upload and your submissions by hitting the Assignments button in the Logic 2010 main menu, and that will take you to the uh, associated course page. There are lots of extra features uh, in this course that are designed to help you succeed. So I just want to highlight some of them here. The first is Piazza. Piazza is a third-party discussion forum where you will go to sort of post any questions that you have about the course. And in particular, this is where you would go and post questions about how to solve particular problems. So the TAs and myself will be on Piazza, but within a sort of couple days, you'll find that everyone answering the question are other students in the course, and you can get answers to questions very, very quick 
almost 24 hours a day. So you want to post good questions to Piazza. You don't want to just be like, what's the answer? Because the answer themselves doesn't really help you get better at logic. So you want to sort of post screenshots of how far you've gotten in a problem and say, hey, what's the next line? And you know, you can get some feedback then. You are totally allowed to work together on your quizzes. So if you have a problem with one of the quiz questions, you can post to Piazza and say, please, someone help me with this quiz. It's due tomorrow and you'll definitely get help. Uh, another really good option, which is synchronous, is the Logic Lab. The Logic Lab is this drop-in help session uh, that's facilitated by former students of 245. Most of them are current undergraduate students still. And they are able to give more one-on-one -on -one targeted advice in a sort of a live setting. Normally, the Logic Lab is in an actual physical room on campus. This time, we'll be running it online using BB Collaborate, so you'll just be able to drop in from anywhere you want. You'll be able to, you'll want to be able to sort of show them the work you're doing, so having a webcam might be useful, but it's not necessary, and the Logic Lab tutors will be able to sort of walk you through your questions. Again, quiz questions are fair game. You should totally use the Logic Lab uh, to get your quizzes done. Hours for the Logic Lab will be posted on Quarkus. Lastly, I also have office hours. In my office hours, you can come and ask me any question you want. I'm happy to walk you through uh, questions uh, related to the course and uh, practice problems, you name it, we can talk about it. Now, if you want to contact me directly, you can email me at uh, my email address, alex.ku at utoronto.ca, but you must have 245 and then the campus name in your subject or I will not be able to answer your question. There are a lot of students taking this course and I really need to know which campus and so on. Please also have the, your relevant information, name, student number, stuff like that, especially if I need to look anything administrative up for you. Keep in mind that I do have strict email policies. Uh, I cannot answer questions about how to do particular logic problems via email. For that, you have to post to Piazza and the Logic Lab. And there will be other sort of avenues in terms of things like if you miss a test, and so on, uh, all that information will be found in the syllabus. But if you sort of have general course concerns or sort of you know, want to ask me a question beyond sort of the scope of the course, email's fine and uh, I'm happy to respond. I do my best to respond within 48 hours. So again, missed tests and quizzes, you'll have to take a look at the syllabus to, stay, to see the policy, but you'll just have to follow the instructions there and there's a scheduled makeup test at the end of the semester uh, for a missed test. So lots of people can be intimidated by this course because it is a technical course in nature. So there's lots of sort of standard tips for how to succeed in a technical class, particularly if you're an arts or philosophy student who has not taken a technical course at university. So you really don't want to fall behind. This isn't like a standard philosophy course where you can fall behind and be two, three weeks behind in the readings and then spend one day and do all the readings and catch up. That's just really not going to work in this type of environment because logic is a skill-based class. You really need to practice regularly. It's far better to do a practice problem a day and spend just 10, 15 minutes on logic a day than it is to spend you know, six hours one day every two weeks trying to prepare for a test. The tests come very regularly in this course because there's four term tests, so you really don't want to fall behind and you want to practice regularly. Part of that is knowing how to sort of consume the content. You don't want to just watch my lecture videos or my demonstration videos. You want to be actively engaged in them. So make sure whenever I start to do a problem, you pause the video and see how far you get in the problem first, and then just unpause and watch. And, and, and you know, if you get stuck, you can pause again when I sort of solve the section you were stuck on and so on. Remember that you can watch the videos as many times as you want, and you can watch them in double speed, etc. So it's a really good resource to go back and do the problems over and over. This is all about essentially getting feedback. You don't want to just practice on your own in isolation, because if you're doing something wrong, what you're actually doing is reinforcing bad techniques. So you really do need to make use of Piazza, the Logic Lab, and my office hours to get feedback as fast as you can. And really, Piazza is going to be your best friend in this course uh, as we move along. And finally, Logic 2010 isn't just for quizzes. Logic 2010 is a really great program because it's got hundreds and hundreds of extra questions that you can do for practice. So Logic 2010 is your go-to in terms of extra questions for the question bank. Okay, that's it for the core information for the class. Again, you're going to want to take a look at the syllabus and you can post questions in Piazza whenever you want about anything related to the course.